Hi, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show how to use the arrangement view as a type of step sequencer for programming drums. Now, there's not a step sequencer built in in Studio One. And if you can get sounds recorded off of any of your favorite soft synths, like Presence or Impact or any of the other drum machines you happen to have, or just find individual drum hits, you can set up this type of a step sequencer approach and it's really a technique because there is no step sequencer that's built in. Of course, you could use third-party step sequencers quite effectively. But anyway, this is a fun way to work and something that I thought you might be interested to see. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go into the browser and under sounds with the included sounds, there's a whole bunch of drum hits. And they're under the Uber Shawl Impact Drums. And you can get impact presets, but also all the individual sounds are all broken out in here. So I've browsed into this one called Chiller's Joined, and I'm going to um, audition a few sounds. That's a pretty good kick. All right, good. we're going to take this as our kick. I'll just drag this over to my kick track that I've already got set up. Now let's find a couple other sounds, and we'll audition it right here. Nice sounding snare. We'll just snap that in there. Back over here, we'll audition a few more sounds. All right, we're going to take this as our hi-hat sound. Now, we didn't find a hand clap in there, and I thought I kind of wanted a hand clap, so we're going to go into... Some one of these other sound sets and see if we can find a hand clap. There we go. A, a kind of a TR style hand clap. Now, we can't just use them like this, so we're going to trim up all of these sounds. And I'm, what I'm going to do is go to a 16th note grid. So we'll use a 16th note grid for this, and then I'll use the grid and just trim all of them back to the grid. Now, the next thing we want to do is just grab all of them, and we're going to duplicate them a few times. So this uh, indicates kind of our first beat of music on our step sequencer. I'm going to take the first downbeat, and I'm going to just open the inspector and change this to kind of a brighter color so that I can see the, clearly see the downbeat. And then now over this first measure, I'm just going to use the D command and duplicate this three more times. All right, so now I've got my basic sequencer arrangement set up. I just need to grab the mute tool and mute everything to get started. So you can see I've got a loop set over the first measure here, and the loop is turned on. I'm going to just hit playback. I don't think I need this metronome anymore. And now, using something very similar to a step sequence, I can just mute and unmute all these beats to start to create my beat. So there's my... Uh, my kick sound. Now we can come in with a snare. Let's put a snare here on the uh, kind of as a backbeat. I can adjust the, the volume of that. All right, I don't know if I really like that, but we'll try this. Let's just break this up a little bit. Now on this part here, since I want to bring that in a little bit uh, more gradually, I'm just going to use a fade handle to reduce the volume of these just a little bit. All right, let's bring in some hi-hats, go back to the mute tool, and then we could just swipe over all these hi-hats to bring them in. 
Sounds a bit mechanical, but I can go back to the arrow tool and we'll bring down the, these inner ones a little bit. Of course, if we wanted other sounds or an open hi-hat, we could have brought that in and worked with that just along. I'm also going to play around with leaving some of these out. And now for my second part of, to, go, to move along here, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing and start working on the second measure. For the second measure, we'll just extend this out and we'll loop it back. Now, since we're just working on an ordinary audio track, any of the things that I would normally do with a track are available. I can drop effects on this track. I can use either these tools here, or I can open the mixer, and I can set up panning. So like on the clap, I was playing around with panning the clap off to one side or the other. I can solo it. So anyway, that's basically how this works. With, with this set up this way, I can also use all the features that I have available on the arrangement view. So say I wanted to move this to 16th note triplet sound, or let's try a 16th note with 20% uh, of swing to give a little bit of a feel to it. Now all I need to do is select these notes and do quantize event starts. I've got that set to uh, control shift Q on my computer. You can see that gives it a whole different feel, but let's try a much heavier swing, like 80%. I'll do Control, Control Shift Q. You can see that completely changes the feel. Now my programming during this demonstration might not be the best, but you can use your own creativity to come up with any type of part that you'd like. I like this because I can use a hybrid approach to programming. I can easily bring in loops. I can even use some of these clips, could be instrument parts. If you think about the potential with that, it really opens things up. So I just thought that was a interesting tip, a cool way to work with drum parts, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.